white. It's about seeing, illuminating, discovering, understanding. Light leads to knowledge. Knowledge leads to discernment. Light is an opportunity to explore what it means to be a good neighbor as a moral and Christian imperative. Light will infuse and impact the entire Lipscomb community. Words like love, wisdom, and grace have always been important to us as Christians as we seek to illuminate God's love, wisdom, and grace towards us. Today is Light Day, a day designed to shed light on light. We're excited about what light will bring to our community locally, interculturally, and globally. Today, feel the light shine on you. Hey, Lipscomb University, this is Shane Claiborne, and I'm coming your way. I am so excited about this event we've got planned on February 8th, on Wednesday night. It's a special edition of the Token Show. We're calling the whole evening Executing Grace. I'm going to share about my new book, about the death penalty and grace and what it means to, to worship an executed and risen Savior. But you're also going to hear from some amazing voices. Uh, a, a man who spent 20 years on death row for a crime that he did not commit. You'll also meet an awesome woman whose dad is on death row for killing her mom and hear how the death penalty has affected their family. You'll hear some songs from my buddy Derek Webb. You're going to meet some amazing people. It's going to be an epic night. The whole thing's free. So come over to the Alumni Auditorium uh, Wednesday night, February 8th at 7 o'clock. I really believe that we could be the generation to end the death penalty. So come here how. I'll see you on Wednesday night. Hey, good morning, Lipscomb University. Good morning, is anyone there? It must be rainy outside. Um, there, honestly though, that was a good one, I appreciate it, I got some fans. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Awkward silence, how about it? This is what happens when I don't have a handheld mic and I can't pace as I talk to y'all. Um, but guys, I'm really excited about today, as you, as you saw, from the videos leading up to today, we have a, an exciting announcement, an exciting opportunity where we as the Lipscomb community get to talk about engaging some of the most important conversations on campus um, and around our city and around the world together. But we also have other ways in which we're being invited into participating as a family and making a difference, both creating the culture on campus, but maybe setting the tone for what it looks like to live uh, as brothers and sisters. And so we'll hear more about an important initiative that we're launching today. Um, as you guys are finding your seats, there, the, the video you just watched with Shane Claiborne, there's two exciting opportunities tomorrow. The first one is to go and spend an evening with Shane Claiborne. Our very own Tokens is hosting Shane Claiborne an evening with, ex, or an evening with Shane Claiborne on executing grace. They're gonna discuss the death penalty there's going to be our very own Dr. Lee camp there to host. It'll be fun. There'll be music. There'll be conversation. But also at the same time, in Ward Hall at 630, there's another important conversation going on through Human Docs. They're hosting or, uh, a movie viewing of the documentary 13th. So if you haven't seen either one of those, tomorrow evening there's an opportunity to engage in really important conversations that are relevant for all of us today. And I hope you choose to be at one of those. The, the uh, Tokens event will be an alumni starting at 7 p.m. Tickets are free, just show up. Again, Human Docs will be in Ward Hall at 6.30, and there will be a panel discussion to follow. So as you guys enter, as you found your seat, I invite you guys to stand up as we kick off the gathering today. Let's sing. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Whole of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. 
worship, and here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me, King of all days, all so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for our sake became poor. So here I am to worship, and here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me, and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, and here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, and altogether worthy, altogether heart adore you, whole of a life stand with you. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand in Christ alone. Took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross that Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ, no guilt in life. No fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, 
Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Amen. You can be seated. Illuminating, discovering, understanding. Light leads to knowledge. Knowledge leads to discernment. Light is an opportunity to explore what it means to be a good neighbor as a moral and Christian imperative. Light will infuse and impact the entire Lipscomb community. Words like love, wisdom, and grace have always been important to us as Christians as we seek to illuminate God's love, wisdom, and grace towards us. Today is Light Day, a day designed to shed light on light. We're excited about what light will bring to our community locally, interculturally, and globally. Today, feel the light shine on you. <laughs> Thanks, it's nice to be the first person to model the light shirts officially in front of you, which I hope you'll be sporting after uh, chapel today. So I'm in class and, you know, teach, teach, lecture, blah, blah. And the hand goes up, yes, question. Uh, so yes, what's your question? And then there's that question that a teacher causes a teacher to die a little bit on the inside when he or she hears, right? Is this going to be on the test? And it's sort of like, well, <laughs> From a student's perspective, you understand that question. It makes some sense. It's not necessarily a bad question, but sometimes from a teacher's perspective, what it reflects is a bit of a short-sighted concern that maybe misses the bigger point of education. Who's my neighbor? That sounds like maybe a better question. Not necessarily a bad question, for sure. And especially in the context of Luke 10, where Jesus has mentioned this great command, love your neighbor as yourself. Who's my neighbor? In this case, however, Jesus knew that this question was intended to define in the sense of reducing or limiting those that we have to love. It misses the bigger picture of the command. So Jesus responded to this short-sighted question with the now famous parable of the Good Samaritan. And as was true of many of Jesus' parables, this one uh, undercuts misguided human thinking. The expected heroes, from a Jewish perspective at least in the story, uh, were the priest and the Levite, but who walked on the other side of the road and left the wounded man in his condition. But then it was the hated other, the Samaritan who goes to great lengths to care for the wounded man's needs. And in the end, after telling the story, Jesus doesn't delve into or dwell on the long-standing feud between Jews and Samaritans, but he simply asks the deeper question, which of these was a neighbor to the wounded man? Jesus' inquirer, perhaps uh, reluctant to say the word and, and, and say it directly, still gives the correct answer when he says, the one who had mercy on him. He gave the right answer, he got to the heart of the issue. And then of course Jesus calls this man and us to do likewise, that is to treat others with mercy. And so what Jesus does here is he shifts the focus from defining those I'm required to love to defining what it means to be a loving neighbor. And that kind of love, as we see it reflected in the parable, transcends the normal lines we draw. And sometimes we draw those lines to separate ourselves for a, a lot of different reasons, maybe to protect our interests. Maybe that was this questioner's original goal. I want to find out what the definitions are so I can sort of protect myself and my interests. And that kind of question, that kind of situation that was in existence that prompted the parable is something obviously that's very real for us today. 
One of the buzzwords we hear a lot is this word globalization. The capacity for connectivity in the world has drastically increased with the development of technology, with the cloud. And, and so as we think about an initiative on campus that has to do with creating greater global awareness, that has to do with developing global skills for our students and in reality for all of us, from an academic standpoint, from a career preparation standpoint, it's really sort of a no-brainer. But one thing we want you to know today that is that those of us who've been on this committee and have been working on this for months and months is that in light of Lipscomb's distinctive identity, pun intended, in light of Lipscomb's distinctive identity, that this parable, as we've talked about the QEP, the Quality Enhancement Plan, and its specific manifestation, the LIGHT program, this parable has always been in front of us. Globalization offers great opportunities, but it also brings a lot of stresses and it makes us feel threatened. An interesting book come out recently by New York Times uh, columnist Thomas Friedman, and uh, he, he says that the world is not just rapidly changing, it is being dramatically reshaped. It is starting to operate differently in many realms all at once. And this reshaping is happening faster than we have yet been able to reshape ourselves, our leadership, our institutions, our societies, and our ethical choices. So a lot of opportunities, but also a lot of stresses and a lot of potential dangers. But let's think just a little bit about those possibilities. In, in Friedman's book, he mentions that about a year ago, February the 24th, 2016, Facebook did a little bit of research. And what they wanted to see was how groups that had traditional long-standing feuds connected with one another. And they discovered that in one day, over two million people from India and Pakistan connected on Facebook. On that same day, with a much smaller population, over 150,000 people from Israel and Palestine connected on Facebook. And almost 140,000 from Ukraine and Russia. Now, obviously, there are a lot of questions. We don't know all the ins and outs of the nature of that connection, but the connection is at least there to some extent. And Friedman also tells sort of a fascinating story about a professor who is an Arab Israeli Christian. Right. Now, there are a number of people who have that, that kind of description, but it's an interesting combination, right? An Arab Israeli Christian. And he offered a free online course on nanotechnology. And it was offered uh, in both Arabic and English. And it was based and housed in an Israeli university. He had nearly 5,000 people register for this online course, including students from Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Sudan, Yemen, and the West Bank. Now, a few didn't quite understand in the beginning exactly where this course was coming from, and, and once they found out, a few did drop out, but most didn't. And a number of people were inspired by what was happening here. And so ultimately the question for us is, how will we use the amazing power of the capacities to which we now have access? The image of light evokes Christians' call to live in God's light as manifested in Jesus. Jesus, as John says, the light, the light of the world. And as we live in this light, the world can see the way back to God's original intent for the creation, for the role of humanity as the image bearers of God, and Paul says that the gospel, this good news about the light that we find in Jesus, breaks down walls of hostility. And it did that in the early church. It broke down that wall between Jew and Samaritan. And then it went on to break down, in a sense, even that bigger wall between Jew and Gentile. Now, it hasn't always worked that way, but it can. And now we have a great challenge and we have a great opportunity and so that's what this light program is, is directed toward, multiple at dimensions, but certainly that distinctive Lipscomb stamp that we want to put on it. And so my prayer is that God will bless our efforts to see the light of true humanity, to be the light, and to call others to that light. Well, now I want to ask you to welcome our uh, fearless and fabulous leader of our uh, committee that's been working together. Wonderful group of people, but certainly a great leader. And so uh, Kim Reed is going to tell you a little bit more about that program.
morning, everyone. As uh, Terry just said, I'm Kim Reed. I'm the chair of the Department of English and Modern Languages. And I'm here to give you a very quick overview of a crucially important process that we're going under, undergoing right now. It only happens once every 10 years. As you know, Lipscomb is an accredited university. And accreditation is important because it signals to the world that our school meets a set of standards that are rigorous and therefore is uh, acknowledged by the United States Department of Education as a reputable institution. Accreditation is what allows Lipscomb to offer federal financial aid to its students. Accreditation is what facilitates transferring credits between Lipscomb and other schools. Accreditation adds great value to the work that you're doing right now in your classes because it tells graduate schools, med schools, law schools, future employers that Lipscomb maintains the highest of standards. The accreditation process, once a university is accredited, is called the reaffirmation. It culminates every 10 years in two major reports that the university sends to our accreditation association, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, SACS, or SACS. One of those two reports is a self-study in which the university examines how well it has maintained the standards for the past 10 years. So it's about the past. The second report is a plan for the future. Sachs calls it the Quality Enhancement Plan. It is the QEP, you just heard Terry mention, and it gives us an opportunity to create a brand new program at Lipscomb that will enhance student learning. So it's an exciting opportunity. <clears throat> now, before I tell you about the QEP, let me alert you to this. Three weeks from today and tomorrow, February 28th and March 1st, SACS will send a committee of faculty from other institutions for our reaffirmation visit. Those are very important days for us. While that committee is here, that visiting committee, they will meet with students and talk to them about Lipscomb's QEP. We don't know yet who those students are. They may be you. So today's gathering is an important opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about our QEP. A little over two years ago, the provost of Lipscomb, Dr. Craig Bledsoe, created a faculty committee to guide the process of creating a QEP. The committee invited other faculty colleagues from around the campus to suggest topics for a plan that would enhance student learning. And the recommendation that was the most often submitted by faculty from all over the campus focused on intercultural learning. So with much research, many hours of discussion on our committee, with our con consulting students, staff, administration, the board of trustees, the QEP committee worked for two years to draft a quality enhancement plan called LIGHT, Illuminating Cultural Engagement. Now, if it still needs to be approved by SACS, but if it's approved by SACS, the LIGHT program will help all of us here at Lipscomb to develop or to hone our intercultural skills. Very important to hear this, it will not be a new requirement for graduation. Instead, some current general education courses and some major courses will become light classes. Many extracurricular activities, for example, those sponsored by the Office of Intercultural Development, will become light events. Students can choose to become light scholars by taking part in a variety of light experiences. Those experiences might be here on campus, they might be just down the street in Nashville, or they could be around the world with missions or global learning. <clears throat> so here's how the light program will do what SACS wants it to do, enhance student learning. You all will have the opportunity to develop truly sophisticated intercultural engagements with other cultures. This means that you will understand, first of all, more deeply your own culture's perspectives on the world. You will become more comfortable at communicating with those who are different from you. You will be better able to adapt appropriately and gracefully 
to different cultural contexts. Now, I want to introduce my QEP colleagues, the faculty committee to you. They have worked long and hard, as I say, for two years, and uh, we've become a very close group. They represent the entire university, as you will see. I'm going to ask them to stand and remain standing. And then after I finished introducing them, they are going to go ahead and go out to the lobby to prepare to give you the t-shirts that you will see we're all wearing. So starting with Dr. Briley, Terry Briley from the College of Bible and Ministry. <clears throat> Casey, Casey Gill from the library. Phyllis Hildreth from the College of uh, Leadership and Public Service. Yeah. Donna King from the College of Entertainment and the Arts. Ken Mayer from the College of Computing and Technology. I think Ken is standing guard. Emily Medlock from the College of Education. Dave Morgan from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Nina Morrell, the Dean of the College of Professional Studies. Greg Nordstrom from the Raymond B. Jones College of Engineering. Karen Robichaud from the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. She was called out today. I don't think she's here. She wanted to be here very much. Leanne Smith from the College of Business. And my English colleague, Dr. Stacia Watkins, who is representing the General Education Program. Thank you all. Now, to conclude, I want to say this. The people that you see leaving right now and I are convinced that at Lipscomb, we can glimpse the vision that we read about in John 1, 5. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The mission of the light program is to guide you in preparing for a lifetime of collaborative engagement with the cultures of the world. <clears throat> Again, this will happen in courses that prepare you for a diverse world, with a campus environment that celebrates cultures near and far, and all of this, we hope and we pray, will result in the spiritual growth that comes from, as Dr. Brawley said, caring for one's neighbor as for oneself. Now, I'm very pleased that Dr. Lowry is here to make a special announcement and show his support of this program. Thank you. Well, good morning, Lipscomb. It's great to be here and great to be celebrating the beginning of what will be a 10-year journey, but a wonderful journey. When I came to Lipscomb about 11 years ago, one of the things I realized in Nashville is you have a choice, and each of you has this choice. You can figure out how to live a life with only your folks, or you can take advantage of the tremendous cultural opportunities in this city and as many of you have done in the world. I realized that I could leave my house at 10 o'clock at night and drive a mile north on Franklin Road uh, and I would be the only white guy in a store that was largely a black neighborhood. I realized I could drive two miles to the east and I would be the only person who didn't speak Spanish. I also realized I could drive two miles to the west and be in Green Hills and perhaps never run into any of those people at the mall. But what a boring existence that would be. And so we set about a number of years ago to diversify our community. We've had the wonderful foundation that you have given us in terms of service to the community and fulfilling that requirement of 10 years ago. And now we have this opportunity to once again regroup and reaffirm something that is of critical importance, not only to our community, but also to our larger Nashville community and also to the world. And isn't it a remarkable time that today on CNN and Fox and whatever news source you go to, you will see tremendous controversy in our country as people try to figure out how to navigate this we are going to be a university that shines this light to the world, equipping ourselves to be cross-culturally competent, 
but also sharing with others how cultures can come together, can enrich each other, and how we can live in a cross-cultural world. So I've been asked to read this proclamation, and with it, we will turn over to our last speaker, Leanne Smith, and then shortly be dismissed. Whereas the primary mission of Lipscomb University is to integrate Christian faith and practice with academic excellence through service to the larger community. And whereas Lipscomb faculty, students, and staff, and administrators have worked together to propose a new program in intercultural engagement, LIGHT, Illuminating Cultural Engagement. And whereas the LIGHT program will carry out the university's mission by guiding students in developing respectful attentiveness to diversity and responsive awareness of neighboring as a moral imperative. And whereas the LIGHT program has been presented for approval to the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges, and whereas a visiting committee from the Southern Association will arrive on the Lipscomb campus in late February to learn more about the LIGHT program. Now therefore, be it resolved that the spring semester of 2017 shall be declared a season of light, a season of light at Lipscomb University with campus-wide celebrations of this new opportunity for eliminating, illuminating cultural engagement. Thank you for joining us as we embark on this very important journey. Three weeks from today, our visiting SACS team will be on campus. We want to illustrate our commitment to this proposal to them by wearing our light t-shirts. So pick them up as you leave today. Uh, smalls and mediums are in front of the concession stands. Large double X and triple X are in front of the Hall of Fame room. Thank you, you're dismissed. <laughs>